Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, so we we we'll, we just had, um, you know, we we were doing doing like a warm up to really have a, a basic understanding about um, about suicide, uh, just to also check on certain attitudes of of our of of what we have uh, with regard to suicide and how we can correct some of that. Um, so just a note, you know, um, sometimes these uh, talks or discussions of suicide and uh, of warning signs and all of that can definitely or at times can bring about significant strong emotions within us as hearers or as those of us who discuss it. And uh, I just want to be uh, um, you know, just sensitive about the fact that uh, just take some time to monitor what your reactions to these may be. And uh, if you do feel a sense of overwhelm, um, please ensure that you can reach out. You could reach out to me or to anybody else, someone who you trust about just being able to share what uh, uh, of what you may be feeling. And that's important. Uh, so these can evoke strong reactions in us and it's okay to to uh, you know to face that that there are strong reactions especially if it's a new topic of it's if it's if it's got some kind of a um, background to it uh, please ensure that you reach out if you would need any any specific help okay um, so uh, just to give you certain examples not examples certain understanding about what are we looking at when we when we look at uh, different forms of self-harm or different forms of life-threatening behaviors okay um, one of the terms is yes suicide which is the action of killing oneself intentionally that is the meaning of suicide a para suicide attempt is a non fatal act that is it does not um, uh, move to death but the person deliberately causes injury to self or ingests some prescribed uh, dose of something in excess so it is it's not something that becomes fatal but it it definitely is an intention the intention is there and sometimes a para suicide attempt often is because they may be oblivious of the fact of of what actually causes a suicide uh, uh, causes a success attempt of suicide okay the other uh, word that we also need to look at is self harm which is the attempt to harm or destroy the body with no intent of killing oneself and that you would see is superficial cuts or superficial ways of releasing um, pain away without actually the intention of of killing oneself. Okay, so that's what is called self harm. Just just a couple of uh, um, terms that we need to understand. So as as we said, it is the leading third leading cause of death. It's the act of taking one's own life. Remember that many people who commit suicide do suffer um, from depression or other mental disorders, and this is not all uh, all the entire population of those who commit suicide but a good percentage of a 50 to 60 percent of those who do commit suicide do have an underlying depression um, uh, a clinical depression or any other kind of mental health disorders now quickly we're just going to look at certain reasons i know these aren't completely comprehensive but nevertheless i think it helps to give us a uh, uh, a good idea so one of the leading causes is a major psychiatric illness which can be um, there are there are different kinds of illnesses that that lead people to commit suicide one is clinical depression now this type of depression is not just a, a phase of being feeling low or feeling sad it is much more severe and unbearable something that we looked at when we were looking at mental health concerns and those who suffer from depression especially severe depression are at greatest risk for suicide um, uh, at the time even before they are they have fallen in treat uh, gotten into treatment and even after they have got into tr treatment and they begin to feel better um, because when when someone some people are severely depressed they may not even have the sense or the energy to carry out the suicide and they begin to recover and they feel better and that's when they may they may return to the thought and return to carrying it out especially when they don't have um, extended 
uh, uh, help, you know, either uh, emotional or spiritual help. When that doesn't help, uh, happen, you know, people with clinical depression on treatment, there are high chances of them going into um, uh, of attempting suicide. Schizophrenia or even certain bipolar illnesses, which has depression in it, these can be, again, schizophrenia is another um, uh, uh, one of the symptoms could be of a depression in itself, especially in conditions of paranoid schizophrenia. That's where they have the fear that people are, um, or they or they are being they are being followed. They are being uh, uh, they are being um, talked about. They are being um, pursued uh, negatively. They they feel that they are going to be killed. So these kind of thoughts uh, bizarre thoughts could also lead them into having into having suicidal thoughts and ideations that can lead to attempts so uh, we must consider the fact that uh, you know someone who does who is comes across as suicidal we need to have a check to understand to an evaluation to check whether this has a psychiatric condition or not okay the next leading cause is substance uh, alcoholism and drug abuse and often this is associated with higher suicide rate because often the substances uh, bring down insight and bring down judgment and a lot of uh, especially a lot of uh, adolescent suicides are linked to associated a lot with uh, substance use um, when when they are either having an overdose or under the uh, influence of alcohol there is lesser if their, their inhibitions are even lesser you know they're not inhibited and they could probably either act impulsively or there could be uh, a, it's called comorbid that is they have even depression as part of their morbidity or, or a disease factor. So alcoholism and uh, uh, drug use can be uh, significant stressors that can not just uh, result in depression, but there can be a tendency for high risk behavior, which one of it is um, uh, high risk behavior, which one of it is suicide. There are conditions of, um, you know, the inability to cope, the certain personalities where they just uh, uh, one is impulsivity okay because of of conditions that may may happen and that and the uh, the inability to to work out a solution to work out um, a problem there can be impulsivity and and we do see that uh, even sometimes suicides are because of impulsivity you know just decide like there, there is a there is an argument that takes place and somebody just decides to run out or walk out i mean jump out of the window or jump out of a terrace or, or things like that so impulsivity and inability to cope uh, which shows that they aren't resilient to issues and and uh, uh, problems in life and often we see this as a result of uh, not 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 having had opportunity to deal with frustration to deal with you know wilderness experiences and uh, as a result just just uh, unable to really work through um, a, a, of a significant solution losses significant losses now this can be loss in relationships it can be uh, loss in uh, finance it could be loss in um, you know different other things that could um, drive a person to such an extreme now these two tie together this one and the point above that is the inability to cope inability to see hope in anything they kind of tie together but a sudden loss could probably lead them to uh, to commit uh, to committing suicide um it it often like we said it's it's a cry for help a lot of a lot of them just commit suicide because it's the only thing that they think uh, that they have or or they're able to do so that that could be uh, that's another reason other other kind of uh, conditions more minor ones would be those um you know having uh, having outbursts of anger there can be um, even manipulative personalities where there is a sense of uh, you know being able to emotionally blackmail somebody and and just walking out to to do something 
maybe the intention isn't as much there, but uh, the, the means yet, uh, the emotional disturbance is so high, is so overwhelming that they often take some of those drastic steps. We also see that, um, uh, you know, media, media, uh, social networking, all, all kinds of uh, influences that come out, out of uh, entertainment and media is also, again, um, you know, one of the causes that, that takes place that, you know, there's, there's no way to cope in something. So this is the best way to, to, to deal with, uh, with issues. Okay. So that's, that's quickly um, on what are the reasons, just some warning signs. And I think this is important to, um, to understand. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to probably read these out because I think they, they give, um, um, uh, they, 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 it's actually explainable. Okay, so first I start right from the top. It's a sense of hopelessness or no hope for the future. They don't see any way that they can work out um, some issue or some some future path in their life. There's no purpose uh, being there. Isolation or feeling alone. Uh, not having any kind of a social network or a support system, uh, aggressiveness and irritability. We, we spoke that uh, earlier. Possessing legal means, just the fact that they have something, that, that they are in possession of something that could take away life. It could be pills, medication, um, um, uh, uh, arms, uh, you know, guns, uh, weapons, all of that could probably also be warning signs. Um, they, they, they keep saying that they feel that they're a burden to others. Okay, In their conversation, there is a sense of uh, feeling feeling like a, like a burden. There can be drastic changes in mood and behavior. You know, you begin to see fluctuations, very strong fluctuations in their mood, frequently talking about death, uh, self-harm, like cutting behaviors, uh, now, that's why we need to take even self-harm issues seriously when they do say that they're going to just kill themselves, but then, you know, they just continue cutting, which means it's a cry for help. So they do require some emotional, spiritual, psychological help that can help them cope with the kind of um, pain that they're feeling. Engaging in risky behaviors, you know, doing things that are uh, that are highly risky, you know, driving at, at high speeds or, or doing... Um, significantly dangerous sport uh, or you know just walking into into maybe just getting into the sea and just walking out into the sea without any kind of a, a kind of a, you know gear and things like that so so these are these are all risky behaviors you know that that it doesn't matter what is going to follow for them having funeral making funeral arrangements that they have settled everything, giving things away, that is, you know, settling the house, writing down a will, uh, putting down property, writing up insurance, all of that, again, are warning signs. Substance abuse, again, is a sign. Making threats, you know, suicidal threats, that I will kill myself, I will go do this, um, I, I will ensure that, you know, you won't see me again tomorrow, tomorrow by this time I'll be dead. Those are all warning signs. And um, a negative view of self, significant... Um, uh, issues with self-esteem is something that again uh, it becomes becomes like a warning sign. Okay, um, we move to the next one. Okay, how do we generally kind of have a risk assessment? Um, now, what does this mean? A risk assessment is you're you're looking at who are at greater risk to commit suicide. So. Um, when you are assessing somebody, these are certain points to to keep about. It's it's predicting um, if a person would commit suicide. Now, prediction is not always easy, but there are these known factors, uh, these risk factors, and uh, they they may be a better prediction for suicidal risk. And this goes under the acronym of sad persons. Okay, if you look at it, it's sad persons. And it was described by it's, it's something that's described by in research. Um, and it, it has been continuously reviewed. And people use this um, to, to generally have have a 
have an assessment. Okay, so it's just something for us to understand. So who are at a greater risk? So people now it does not mean all men, all men. You have to go assess all men whether they're suicidal. That's not what it means. You're looking at if there are corroborating symptoms that come about. You know, let's say someone who's depressed, someone who's alone, um, someone who's had significant losses, um, someone who has a very negative view of themselves. You know, you you kind of find some of this, and then you kind of do the kind this this assessment okay so uh, risk assessment as sex which is uh, males like we said they are at a greater risk for suicides um, some of the reasons being one they're um, you know culturally also not this depends from culture to culture of uh, the need for men to be stronger the need for the the expectations of men to be macho to to not be emotional to not cry to not be able to discuss problems so they are very internal in nature and they they do not um, bring about or or share as much as women do and uh, men being a little bit more aggressive to to having want to complete something they've started these are certain factors that make men more uh, more at risk for suicide age group we see the age group between the teens the uh, late teens to around um, midlife is what we see as a greater uh, chance uh, d is for depression so if there is clinical depression they are at a higher risk P is for previous suicide attempts. Have there been a history of suicide attempts in their own lives, um, as well as if there has been something in the family? Has there been a family history of suicide? That again makes it a greater risk factor. Uh, e is ethanol. Ethanol meaning alcohol or other substance abuse. So someone who's who who who's um, and uh, who's into alcohol or into drugs uh, is someone who is risk for uh, uh, is at risk a rational thinking loss uh, now these are for example those who have uh, mental health uh, disorders like schizophrenia they schizophrenia is a thought disorder so if they do do not have a, a thinking uh, they, they are not able to rationally, realistically think, which happens in mental health disorder, mental illnesses like depression or schizophrenia. They are again at a higher risk. Um, S S again is for social support, a social support that's lacking. O is an organized plan. If there is a, a very very significant plan, they 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 have it all uh, ready and um, planned out. That becomes uh, a greater risk. Um, N is for no spouse. If they are unmarried, if they're single, that is at a greater risk. And S is sickness. If there is any kind of a chronic, debilitating physical or um, uh, mental illness, can cause uh, can they can be at higher risk for suicide. Okay. Um, I hope uh, is there is there any question before I quickly move on to the second part of it. Okay. All right. So. Suicidal behavior, yeah, yes, um, yes, Samuel, go ahead. Now, Baza, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, I can. Great. Um, just um, in in your statistics, um, is like, no, uh, so direct question, uh, is the suicide rate in Christians more than any other religions? Would you have any idea? Okay, um, I don't have statistics for it, but in experience with just um, counseling, in my experience in the last twenty years, I've um, I've had three believers who have committed suicide. Okay. Uh, as against maybe those who who are outside of it, and again, say so I, I think we should also look at the setting that I've been in. So we in a hospital setting, uh, we would have a larger uh, proportion. But I think in my experience, I've had three believers who have who committed suicide and passed away. Um, but uh, um, when you're looking at, at at a different kind of a setting, I would say. 
um, you know, it's hard. Like in a hospital setting, maybe those who've committed suicide, I have not been able. To, I may not have always had a had a personal uh, uh, rapport with all of them or sessions with all of them. You know, they've come as part of some. You know, as part of the entire team that are, that have been. But then there, I think I I would see a lot more of. Um, uh, again, I'm not sure if I'm biased and I'm, I'm accurate at this, but uh, but when you're looking at a population of two percent Christianity and and the rest of it, the representation is much more from um, other uh, uh, cultures. But have I seen believers committing suicide? Yes, I have. I have. So percentage, I'm sorry, I may not be able to accurately give you, Samuel. Okay, all right. Uh, so we're going to just just to ch just to understand this about suicidal behavior. What is it that you look out for? Um, now, it like we said, it causes pain, immeasurable pain, suffering, uh, and of course, suicide definitely causes a loss of uh, uh, loss to different individuals and uh, and families, and you know, even even to to communities. But um, uh, for if someone is showing one or more of these following behaviors, you can you can be pretty sure that they're thinking about suicide, and it's important not to um, ignore this. Okay, so just quickly, just reading this is excessive sadness or moodiness, uh, talking about wanting to die or to kill oneself, recent trauma of a life crisis, feeling hopeless or having no reason to live, talking about feeling trapped or an unbearable pain talking about being a burden to others, making preparations, acting anxious or agitated, behaving recklessly, sleeping too little or too much, withdrawal, and uh, rage, showing rage or talking about, uh, uh, about revenge. OK? Uh, sorry. OK. Um, just to, just other things that you need to, what would you do? as you're talking to people is yes, you will need to find out these risk factors. You also need to talk about what is their ideas or what are their plans or what is their intent, OK? So it's not just talking superficially that they want to commit suicide, but actually getting into significant details is very important to, to help, um, to help one for you to understand and again thereafter also for you to um to to help okay so uh, we'll just go through that okay so suicide ideation like i said it is important to ask directly use the word suicide when asking about suicide not harm to self okay so use it and uh, often you can you can use it this way you can say i ask everyone i meet with about suicide and so i'm going to ask you have you had any thoughts, so thoughts about suicide or about death? Um, or I've read that between 10 to 50 percent of teenagers have thought about suicide. Uh, is that true for you? Or you could say, you know, sometimes when people are uh, uh, down or depressed or feeling hopeless, they think about suicide and reject the idea um, or, they, or they think about suicide as a solution. Have you had either of these thoughts uh, about suicide? So, you know, you, you need ideation is you you are getting to ask them directly to understand if there are even ideas of it. OK, because just being a uh, just helping them to to talk about it really works and and helps them through uh, through dealing with with uh, those thoughts. OK, you've got to explore frequency. That is how often duration. That is how long and intensity. How debilitating is it? Is it affecting their functioning? Can they work? Can they do things outside uh, when they're sitting alone? Is this all that's been going on in their minds? So that's ideation. You, you, you check on frequency. How often? How many times have you thought about it yesterday? From when have you been thinking about it? When it starts to happen, how long does it take on? Uh, how does this affect your day-to-day -day functioning? So these are ways that, that you find that out. You assess the plan. Now, it is, again, there is an acronym here. It's called SLAP, okay, which means SLAP is S is for specificity, specificity, specific details. What have you planned? What did you do? 
or how are you uh, what what are your thoughts so how are you planning to carry this out so they will say i went to the store yesterday what did you buy i bought 100 pills what are those pills whatever they say where did you read about this pills maybe i looked it up in the internet what do you think these pills do if i take 5 this is what will happen. i take 10 this is what will happen. i take 20 this is what will happen so be specific about it or when when did you consider doing it i consider doing it when nobody's at home i know they go to the office i go this this and i'm alone at this point of time that's when i hope to do it okay so being very very specific about details of the plan okay l is lethality lethality means how much does it kill how dangerous is it what is their plan uh, and and how dangerous is it like for example if they were to say you know i want to kill myself but i'm going to take uh, five pills of restel okay it's not going to kill them it is it is definitely going to going to significantly cause uh, physical issues okay so there you know you, it, it kind of helps you understand that um, they, th there hasn't been too much of a uh, research on that okay or uh, are they are they doing multiple things like for example you know they hang themselves and they take pills to ensure that the plan is being executed completely so what is the lethality of the plan okay availability of the means how are they going to get it how are they procuring it uh, who all have they involved in it what have they done to get it where are they hiding it um, you know what what's going on there proximity of social support is who is there at the home who is who is around right now in their lives that can get support and help from now this is extremely important okay you should never close a, a call or a, or a interaction with somebody until and unless you determine this who is someone you can reach out to tell me the names of two or three people who we can reach out to right now so that you can be helped okay someone you trust who 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 can be helped either through a phone call or through a message or through through some way uh, you know doing that and this is something that is very very important because remember you as a counselor or a pastor or a minister are not going to be living alongside with them okay they need to have you need to have somebody that uh, uh, you can you can you can inform generally what what we also need to do is inform someone with the permission of the person saying that you know we're doing this because uh, uh because we need to keep you safe and it it matters to me for your safety and so i need to involve a person so that they would support you through that we can talk to them so so that needs to be done this last part of the proximity of a of a support system is something that requires to be done next you would look at is the intent what has been the intention behind the suicide okay looking at what are what can be further reasons for living so if you look you know when we were talking with chaya uh, although it is done very badly um, you know we looked for any reason for living you know okay work is not okay home is not okay this is not okay but church there's something that's there so generally when you're looking at intent you're also helping to highlight that so that they get a sense of hope or a sense of purpose onto something okay you also look back into the severity of the attempts that have been hand, done earlier because if there is someone who is attempted earlier there are double chances that it can happen forward okay uh, so you when you're assessing the intent you look to see if it is absent if it's low if it is moderate or high and of course you you need to whatever it is however the intention is uh, you know it you need to take it seriously and get get the support that they need okay um so something just just to add uh, when someone is depressed again when someone comes to you with depression this is always something you will ask uh, whether they are suicidal or not so if they say yes okay now i'm just going to the left left side of the right side your right side of the chart okay you ask about depression if they say yes you ask about suicide okay if they say yes you need to do all this ask about intensity ask about suicide plans ask about intention okay and if all of this has a greater place of yes 
then you're looking at how is it that they can stay safe by arranging help, by informing family or closed ones, and really coming up with a plan of how they can stay safe. So you, after this, you need to go to a place of, okay, let's just talk about how, till we meet again next time, what is it that you're going, you're going to do to help yourself deal with what you are feeling? Okay, so you're discussing ways to stay safe and you are coming in a measure to stay safe. And something that I always do is I build a contract with them. So can, we, can you and I have a contract that at any point of time you have these significant feelings, you will reach out to me, give me a call or write a message to me or meet those other support systems that are there. Would you do that? So I build a contract. So, you know, I, because they sometimes want to honor the contract, I, I find that that plan helps many times. You know, they are able to follow through and or they say, you know, like like this person I was talking to you about, he said, you know, I, I felt this so intensely, but I remembered what you said and I reached out to this friend, a person who he had in mind, went and spoke to him and he, he said, I felt much better doing that. So that just having that contract in itself helps them to significantly follow through something and keep away um, the plan. Okay. Now, what do we do to minister? How, how do we minister? So um, remember the approach to help is very, very significant when, when we are looking at, uh, uh, at, at helping people. Uh, often, um, you know, we, we sometimes just take on a spiritual explanation. So, uh, so many people see um, depression or suicide um, as is very linked to unbelief in sin. Okay, so treatment for this sin is spiritual, is spiritual. And that's why, you know, you repent and you renew your faith in God. So if you remember with Shay, that's what I was attempting to do. Okay. Um, but remember, that's something, although that may be needed at a point of time, that is something that, uh, that we've got to be careful about. Okay. Uh, so even, even that exhortation to return to God uh, can, can definitely make them feel even more even more guilty or the fact that they need to confess all that they're feeling can make them feel even more guilty okay so this is how some one group of people do it another group of people believe that it's only psychological that they feel it is it stems from something that's very internal okay that they see it as a that the, it's a self expression as as the remedy and the te and they tell the person that you know you should psychologically deal with it um, that's one. Bit. The third group is one who entirely sees it as a medical condition. Okay, that is, it is a product of a chemical imbalance um, and all of that. But the one who can blend all of this approaches together gets an overall perspective and is better prepared to respond to someone who is suicidal or depressed. Okay, so it's not just understanding it physically and psychologically; it's understanding it socially and understanding it spiritually. And that's what we weave in to, to helping a person. But in the, in the beginning, as soon as someone comes in and tells you about this, what is it that is most important is to be a compassionate listener. That's the first and foremost thing that you do. It's to just help to listen, OK? Uh, because while you're doing that, you're also giving the person a space to heal. You're giving the person a, a space to know that someone cares enough for you to actually help you pour out as they are listening. Okay, so listening, what does it do? It shows care and empathy. Something we need to avoid doing is to minimize the pain that they are feeling. We 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 should be careful not to bring about this, um, uh, you know, the, the statement everything's okay, or you know, you have no reason to feel this way. Rather, you you know, your 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 response is something that we that that is written down here. You know, I can see how hopeless you feel. Uh, but I, but I believe you know you and I can work this out together. Or I do hear that you're wanting help. So, or or saying something like I can see how hopeless you feel. Or I can, um, uh, you know, again, just just being very simple and practical. Like let's say, someone's 
just come on on the way you know with a coffee or you know you're having coffee with somebody and somebody's saying that say so, let's go for a walk and let's talk more i'm here for you but uh, you know let me hear hear what what's happening let's let's uh, figure out something how you can get help i i want to be with you as you get help from a counselor or you get help from a pastor but i want to walk alongside with you just that much is in fact uh, you know very very helpful remember that in in times like this change can be slow it's trying to it it is not um your what you're doing is you're responding to their frustration you're responding to their to all of that that's that's anxiety provoking for them so that's what you are doing so you you're you're helping them to know that you are with them walking alongside with them and standing with them to follow up the next plans as well even when they are not able to see it you you are helping them to follow the next plan the next thing is being an empathetic responder okay now this uh, it's not just listening but also you're responding now how are some ways to start the conversation so this is something that you could start off like you are observing somebody who is who is depressed or who is uh, suicidal so you could begin by saying something any of these you know i've been feeling concerned about you lately i've noticed some differences in you and wondered how you're doing i wanted to check in with you because you have seemed uh, you seem pretty down lately so these are just those conversation starters what are the questions you can ask when did you begin feeling this way did something happen that make you start feeling this way what is the best support i can give you right now have you thought about getting help what can i do with you to seek help right away who else can we talk to um you know so these questions in itself can be very very helpful what is it that you can say again as a responder uh, again these are all suggestions but you know very helpful especially when you don't know how to bring about something first i feel sorry you feel this way i really want to help you or i want you to live i am on your side we'll work through this i've seen that this is very helpful um you know especially uh, for me this has been extremely helpful when i have expressed the desire that they are important that they are valuable that uh, i see i see and respect uh, um you know what what their thoughts and all are but i would like them to to live and that i am with them that really seems to click a bulb for them because they just see someone alongside okay next thing is you may not believe it now but the way you're feeling will definitely change and this ties into the last one you know by helping them see when you want to give up tell yourself you will hold on for one day one hour one minute whatever you can manage so you're helping them live in the present rather than making them look at what is going to happen years from now or for the tomorrow just allowing them to focus on the present okay or saying things like i may not be able to understand exactly how you feel but i care about you and i really want to help you in whatever way possible so these are ways that that you can build up that responses that is empathetic what is it that you don't say okay and uh, quickly oh come on you will get over this don't be such a drama queen how could you think of suicide your life's not that bad suicide is selfish and cowardly you have your kids to live for others have problems more than you you will go to hell if you die by suicide if you do you will be hurting me okay so these are all um unacceptable ways of uh, uh, of of bringing up bringing up things okay um what is your what is your goal so basically there are in short if you're going to look up goals your first off goals okay i'm not talking about goals for weeks and months your first hand goal is one listening and being empathetic establishing that trusting relationship prevention contracts okay so you're kind of building a contract okay and, and you don't have to have a written contract a verbal one is as fine because you're 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 saying okay from till the next time we meet or maybe till i talk to you in the evening so always give them that you know when i talk to you next so there is something to look forward to okay or when they have that this the 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 mind says okay i'm supposed to be talking to so and so by this evening so building those prevention contracts is very helpful safety planning what can they do now this safety planning is of course is done 
by by talking to others or meeting with um, i mean getting contacts their family contacts or people who can keep them safe giving them instructions of um, getting them help like for example if they're if they're highly depressed getting them mental health help maybe taking them to a doctor um, moving them out from the place which may be uh, risky like let's say if it's a place where uh, um, you know they're, they're living alone moving them out from there where they can live with company keeping away sharp objects keeping away any ingestible items checking to see if there are medications all of that is something that you know and, and keeping a watch over um, you know where they're going so till at point of time that they are able to have established help and of course alternatives to suicide so what do you mean by alternatives to suicide is you help them and you, you're getting them to think about the next time you feel this way what are the other what are things that you will do to keep yourself safe or to keep yourself away from these thoughts okay so they may say i will call you i will text you or i will um you know i will uh maybe i'll go make a cup of coffee or i will just go outside for a walk some alternatives that you plan alongside with them so that they know if i feel this way these are five six things that i have decided to do by myself okay um i would want to uh yeah so just one more slide and then I, I want to show you all um, a video. Okay. What do you not do is do not argue with them. Okay. That, uh, uh, that, that they can't do this. Like, like the arguing is what I did with Shay, I think, is that, you know, you have kids, you have your parents, what will they feel? That's, that's, that's an argument. Okay. Or uh, have you thought about eternity? What's going to happen then? Okay. That's, that's again, very subtle argument, but avoid that. Ignore do not ignore a suicidal threat. Take it serious, seriously. You do not act shocked or lecture about how wrong it is, Okay, either morally, spiritually, emotionally, socially. Um, you, you don't do that. Do not agree to be sworn into secrecy. So they may say, you know, I want to tell you something. I've not told anybody this, and I'm telling you something. Okay? And uh, so the first, as soon as I hear something like that, I'll say, I would be I would be willing to keep this confidential only if it doesn't have a risk to your life because I care for your life. Okay, and uh, I haven't seen people not bringing out that information because I've said that. Say, okay, then I'm not going to tell you what it is. I've I've never had that experience because I think it's it. This also comes in between the relationship. Offer ways to fix their problem or give advice like they're saying, okay, I've lost my money. You know, why don't you take a loan or why don't you get remarried or why don't you divorce him? None of that. Do not offer any kind of um, solutions or giving advice. All that you are required to do is be yourself. Don't be afraid to ask if they're depressed. Listen and reassure help. Tell a family member or a close associate. Make a list of some supports they can turn to and assess that the, the risk, Okay, the plan, the means, the time, the intention. This is what we are looking at doing. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to play a video. I'm just going to hope that you're like going to hear the sound. But if you're Laurent, please let me know. I think the first thing is to take them seriously. That's probably the most important thing that if someone has expressed to you that they've been thinking about uh, harming themselves, thinking about suicide, you need to take them seriously. Now, what you do after that, I think, depends on how much experience you have in assessing people with, with suicidal thoughts. So if you're, if you're just a, a great friend, but don't have a lot of training in terms of how do you actually probe someone in their, in their thinking, then I think the appropriate next step is get, get someone else involved who has some greater experience. Um, and do it, do it right then, you know, with the person in your presence. Uh, is there someone that we can call right now? Who else can we bring into the loop to help you with, uh, with the struggle? It may be a pastor, it may be a friend who's a counselor, there may be other, other people. But that would be, I think, the, f the first thing is to, to enlarge the, the, the group of people who are, who are helping this person and can walk with them and assess their level of, of suicidality. If you're someone who has 
that kind of training has um, feels pretty comfortable assessing where where someone stands in terms of their their suicidal thinking. Then I think you you continue to probe with with questions uh, and very specific questions. Well, tell me what tell me what you mean by that or. Um, sometimes people will give more of a more of a vague I I don't want to live anymore or I wish I were dead and it's more of a it is more of a passive kind of thing and when you when you ask them further about that they will say I don't I don't want to do anything to harm myself I've not really thought about doing anything to harm myself but I just I wish I would die in my sleep or I wish I would get hit by a car or something like that and it's um, that's a different level of danger than someone who, as you ask questions, they, you find that they actually have a well-developed plan. Uh, maybe they're going to take a bunch of pills or they've thought about using a firearm and you find out that in fact they have a firearm and they have a gun in their house. And as you ask further questions, well, have you, have you do you have ammunition? Yes. Um, have you loaded the gun? Yes. Um, have you, have you put the gun to your head? I did. Well, what kept you uh, from, from pulling the trigger? Um, getting, getting that kind of information is going to help you to know just how imminent um, this, this person's risk is. And so there's a, there's, a lot more, there's a lot more to that in terms of the kind of assessment you need to make, but you need to make sure that you and someone else at least um, know where this person stands, that they actually not leave your presence if they, um, if they truly are imminently suicidal. Many people, as you talk with them about their suicidal thoughts, you find they actually don't have a well-developed plan. Uh, and they are honestly not wanting to do anything, but they're, but they're scared and they're hopeless and they're struggling. And Sometimes even talking that out actually is a beacon and a ray of hope. But I think the thing that I would stress the most is this is, this is something very, uh, very serious. You want to take it seriously and you want to make sure as, uh, as whether it's you or someone else who's more experienced is going through a, a proper assessment of the person's level of danger. And if they are truly a danger to, to themselves, then then there may be other steps that need to be taken in terms of hospitalization and other things like that. But you have to get to that level of clarity and detail to know where a person really stands. Okay. Um, I hope you were able to see that. Okay, great, okay. All right, um, yes, Christopher, go ahead. I think you have a question. Um, yes, I just, um, just had a question on... Uh, uh, Christopher, I can't hear you too well. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, no, I had a question with uh, regards to... Uh, you had mentioned earlier that, um, uh, you know, three, uh, three believers had, uh, had, you know, gone ahead and committed suicide. Right. So I just wanted to understand uh, from your side... Um, uh, in that process of you know um, you know working with them um, um, you know uh, in that in that in that uh, situation what were some things uh, that you know possibly did not work well or um, did not um, uh, you know uh, did not really sort of you know get get them to a point where you know they they would have they would have reversed their decision mm. uh, yeah I mean uh, I understand some of this. Maybe it is, you know, I don't know how recent it is, but uh, it may be painful for you. But uh, just wanted to understand, uh, you know, what what could be some of those, uh, some of those, uh, mm -hmm. some of those points. Yeah. So um, two out of three was uh, diagnosed with significant depression, and uh, uh, they uh, both of them, in fact, uh, um, were, were battling the this. Uh, point of healing, why healing hadn't come upon them and, uh, you know, have battled the decision of getting off medication because uh, they have uh, believed that, um, you know, in, in the condition that they are in, uh, uh, you know, if instituting their faith, then they are putting God down. So 
uh, both of them had gone off medication for a significant period of time. And this was depression since for a long season of time. And uh, they'd got off medications because um, of their fear that they were not really putting their faith in God. And uh, yeah, so that's that was that were two of them. Uh, the the other one was a more an impulsive act as a result of ongoing stressors, ongoing issues, um, and was an inability to cope with what was happening because stressors were not uh, were not diminishing in any way, and nobody was willing for help in the extended in the extended circle that the person was in. So out of these three people, two were because of depression, got off medication. And the other one was uh, more impulsive. So in the case yeah. of the impulsive one, um, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think I read somewhere that you know uh, there is, there are uh, um, there are people who who talk about suicide, um, and uh, again there are different uh, you know sort of um, you know le uh, levels or uh, you know how they. Uh, uh, you know how they talk about it, but they comes it comes to a stage where um, they don't actually talk about it, and yet uh, it it happens. And uh, I don't know whether there is some um, something that is that that is actually uh, uh, you know sort of symptomatic of you know that condition uh, mm. or sign which 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 will point to that fact that you know they don't talk about it, and then you know impulsively it it just happens. So maybe mm. I don't know if there's any anything that you can. Even, even talk about uh, talk through on that point. So, in in general, uh, there will be certain warning signs. It may not be in the form of a of a conversation or a or a talk, but it will be there in other uh, signs and behaviors. So, it could be either a withdrawal, it could be certain acts, it could be uh, something. I mean, we we did speak about uh, all of those factors. It it usually there is something that's identifiable. Isolation. Often, uh, a lot of this, um, but but not for those who have personality issues. Uh, you may not see too much of an isolation. There's a lot more of a cry there. But uh, I'd see a lot of those who have significant um, mental health concerns that isolation increases. And then it becomes like a, that also could be just an impulsive way, not something that they have thought about, but just that inability to cope with the distress that they are going through. Yeah. Kennedy? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you talk about uh, a situation where people, where young boys or girls are being radicalized eh? into religion where they can become suicide bombers and in cases where some of these suicide tendencies they can't run in a family. It's not a generational part. Sorry, Kennedy, I, I, I'm not able to follow. You said, Something, can you yeah? talk about a boy? No, where boys are radicalized. Eh? OK. They're they radicalized to become suicide ah. bombers. OK. Yeah, yeah. or they can commit this act of atrocities to others. They eventually even die in the process. Like these young Muslim boys, I think they're being radicalized eh? to join these terror groups. Okay, that's that's a lot more to do with homicide. Uh, that they are they 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 are taught that they are to die for a cause, right? And uh, that happens yeah. a lot more because they have been they have been cultured and taught that that is the purpose of their lives, not something that they would want to do on their own. But they are you know they are taught that they are doing so for in the name of religion or in the name of a country or in the name of uh, something that will give them and usually you would see this in a specific culture where they are given high rewards out in heaven so they are brainwashed that way i think we, there are there are a lot of uh, testimonies that you will see of how young boys are been brainwashed to believe that if they were to give up their lives, it would be uh, it would be very rewarding for them at a point of time. Brainwashed in the sense of 
you know, they're taught, they're taught that over and over again, that this is the purpose of their lives. And this is what um, their God would want them to do and uh, carry out. And so that becomes uh, very impressionable in them. So that becomes a lot more as homicide. Yeah, okay. Um, I, okay, we're, we're close to finishing off with the hour. There are certain scripture signs that bring about, uh, you, you know, certain things for uh, to show us that, yes, scripture prohibits suicide, okay? And uh, there are certain scriptures, and, and I'm just encouraging you to just take a read through that, and also certain verses that, you know, over time you can you can help people with. But I just want to bring about one note, and I think it came in as a question last week in our um, mentoring hour about uh, what happens to those, you know, suicide is one, but, uh, you know, the person who dies, um, uh, of course, the pain and the suffering is immense for the family. Um, and it is a difficult problem. Um, you know, you, the, a lot of times there are questions that are asked about where does this person go? You know, if they have committed, if they as a believer have committed sin, uh, committed suicide, what happens? Um, and I, I think, so one of the things that, I'm, and, and I want to say this and we will close, one of the things that we need to help families is to help them to see that the death of the individual was not their fault. And it's important to keep helping them see this over and over again. And also that, uh, you know, to, to help them to release what they're going through to be able to get help. Um, the question that they ask about is, was it sin that the person person uh, did? Now, we, um, we can agree that, yes, suicide is sin because it definitely involves um, taking of a human life, the unauthorized taking of a human life. But I would say, is this sin different from any other sin? Um, is it somehow ineligible to come under, you know, the healing and the redeeming power of Jesus' death on the cross. Now, that's why some, I know some, there is a group that says yes, and they argue that the act of ending one's own life is that unforgivable sin, because it doesn't leave chance for repentance, because, you know, you need, repentance is understood to be a necessary condition for, for forgiveness. But, um, uh, you know, the, uh, you know that this, this is definitely not assuring, but I think um, we we also need to see that Christ Jesus's atonement covers every sin and everything that uh, can could have ever been committed or you know we will ever commit. So this includes our past, our present, and our future sins. And this can be a very comforting reflection in the case of uh, suicide victims and their family. Um, you know, who were faithful and dedicated followers who, uh, you know, whose, whose people who committed suicide or whose family who's committed suicide have been followers of Jesus. So what the hope that we're giving is that if we believe that the sacrifice of Jesus covers every sin, the sin of taking one's life can be no different than any other sin. Okay. So I, I don't think I, I personally, I'm not in a position to really say what opinion is correct. Um, but uh, the Bible does say, say, you know, in Romans 11, 33, that God's grace and mercy are beyond our understanding and his judgments are unsearchable and beyond our knowing. And it also says, you know, nothing can separate us from the love of God in, in Christ Jesus, our Lord, not neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, not things to come, uh, nothing uh, in all of creation. So, you know, we look towards hope to know that, you know, Jesus is all knowing, is all understanding. And what we are to do is with the families to be able to help them through those hard questions and, uh, you know, search scripture alongside with them and give them the hope that many things are maybe even beyond our understanding. Um, and that God's atonement is enough for for everything, and uh, you know, encourage them with with those words. Okay.
All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I know we've over short time today, but thank you so much for all your patient listening. And um, uh, let's just quickly just take some time to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson, God, as hard as it is. This, God, uh, is hard to explain, hard to understand. But God, we just uh, call you sovereign and call you, Lord, to step into situations where we are called to minister, to help people who are suicidal, to help families who may have had members who've gone through this atrocious uh, um, issue, Father. Lord, we pray that you give us the wisdom we need, that the Holy Spirit will help us to minister appropriately and rightly to those in their time of need. Father, we look to you for understanding greater revelation through all of this. Thank you, God, because you have promised to walk with people who go through these difficulties. Lord, I pray for my class today and all those who are listening, anybody, God, who, who senses and feels this pressure, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will meet with them to reach out and to seek the appropriate help they need. Lord, to be able to just seek the support and love and unburden themselves. Father, I pray that, uh, um, that this would be an answer to their prayer. Thank you, Father, for being with each one of us. We ask, Lord, that you continue working in our lives, Lord. Till we meet again, we pray, God, that you will continue your leading and guiding over our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. God bless. And we will meet next week. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor.